Today we're talking about how you should pick a turntable. Hey friends, welcome back. So if you wanna go right into the record players that I recommend, you can skip to this part of the video. Okay, so I made this video six years ago when I first started this YouTube channel, and since that time, I've learned a lot more about turntables. So I figured I'd give you all an update. So the first thing that you should think about is your budget. You need to know how much you wanna spend on a quality turntable. I would argue that the best models start around $250 to $300 and then go up from there. So basically, the more you spend, the better build quality and sound quality you're gonna get. So for example, the Fluence RT85 is $500 and the Project Debut Carbon Evo is $600. And although that is a lot of money, these are both incredible turntables with audiophile sound that will last you a lifetime. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about those later on. Now, if on the other hand, you're just looking for an affordable entry turntable, then the Audio-Technica LP60X is a great value for only $130. So overall, deciding on a budget is the first thing that you should do. Now, the next thing you should be aware of is to stay away from the all-in-one or suitcase style turntables like, you guessed it, the Crosley Cruisers. Now, to be fair to Crosley, after all my years of bashing them, I've heard some promising things about the C100. However, their cruisers are more like toys instead of turntables. So if you care about the lifespan of your records, you probably shouldn't play them on any of those types of turntables. Pretty much all of them have low quality record cartridges and styluses, and also have no counterweight at the back of their tone arms. So basically their tracking force or the weight of the record needle is too heavy and it could carve up those record grooves like a hot knife through butter. Not good. Also a good rule of thumb to remember is this, if the platter of the turntable isn't big enough to accommodate the full record and the record is sticking out over the edge, then that's a sign that that turntable is trash. Also, record players are meant to stay put. They're meant to stay in one spot. So if it's marketed as portable, then that's also a red flag. A quality turntable should be like your living room TV. It stays put. Now the next thing you should think about is what kind of records are you gonna play? 12 inch albums, seven inch singles, or even those older 10 inch shellac records? Or do you wanna play all three? Knowing what you're gonna play is important because most of the newer turntables are gonna be fine for the 12 inch vinyl albums, like the ones you see on the wall behind me here, and these smaller seven inch singles, but they might not be able to play those older shellac records. Now, as I've said before, those records are becoming more rare and hard to find, but if you do wanna play them, then you're gonna need a turntable that's capable of spinning at 78 RPM. And you'll also need a special stylus for those types of records, but that's a separate video. All right, now the next thing you should figure out is how is this turntable gonna fit into your vinyl audio setup? So every vinyl audio setup is composed of four parts, turntable, preamp, amplifier, and speakers. So if the turntable you're looking at has a built-in preamp, then all you need are the amplifier and speakers. But if the turntable doesn't have a built-in preamp, then you're gonna need to buy that separately in addition to the amplifier and speakers. Does that make sense? So it really helps to think about how everything is gonna to come together. So for example, if you already have a receiver, which is a type of amplifier, and it has a phono input in the back, then that is a preamp. So you'll only need to buy the turntable and a pair of passive speakers, which you then hook up to that receiver. Now the simplest setup would be a turntable with a built-in preamp and speakers with a built-in amplifier also known as active speakers. So how will you know if the speaker has a built-in amplifier? 
Well, if the speaker you're looking at has a volume knob, then it has an amplifier inside. So that's a good way to tell. So overall, think of the vinyl audio setup like a puzzle with four pieces. You need all of them in order to make everything work properly. Now, speaking of the vinyl audio setup, another important question you should ask yourself is, do I only want to play records or do I also want to play cassettes, CDs, eight tracks, or even reel-to-reel -reel tapes? If all you want to do is play your records, then getting a pair of active speakers, which have the amplifier inside, is going to work great for you. But if you want to play lots of different media, then you should instead go for a receiver with a pair of passive speakers. That's actually the setup that I'm using right now, and it works great. Basically, receivers, I think, are really cool because they allow you to hook up lots of different things to the same speakers. So they're kind of like your TV, in a way. Line one is cable, line two is the Blu-ray player, etc., etc. Well, vinyl receivers are no different. Line one could be your turntable, line two, your CD player, line three, your cassette deck, and all of the music is coming out of the same speakers, which is pretty cool. So I like the convenience and the versatility of a receiver, but if all you wanna do is play records, then active speakers would be a better choice for you. So yet again, plan it out and everything's gonna work fine. Now the next thing you should think about is the color of your turntable. So this might seem like an arbitrary thing, but since your record player is gonna be the centerpiece of your bedroom or living room, something to show off to your friends and be proud of, I think the color is important. In my opinion, you should go with something that complements the space. So for example, if you have a black Ikea shelf, maybe going with an ivory white turntable would add a nice contrast. Or if you have a white shelf, maybe going with a darker model or even a bright red turntable could also look really nice. I mean, let's face it, you're gonna drop some money on a turntable, it might as well look cool. Okay, now the next thing you should look for is what is the quality of the cartridge or record needle? So for instance, the cartridge on those lesser quality portable suitcase players that I was mentioning a second ago are pretty bad. They have the potential to damage your record grooves and you can't upgrade them even if you want to. So going with an Audio-Technica LP120X USB or a U-Turn Orbit Plus would be a much better decision because both of the cartridges on those turntables are of a higher quality, they won't damage your records, and they can also be upgraded down the road. So as I said, if you're willing to pay a little more, you're gonna get something that's better build quality and is gonna last you much longer. Now the next thing to think about is do you need to connect this turntable to your computer? So for example, if you wanna convert your records into digital files and keep them on your computer or a hard drive, then you're gonna need a turntable that has a USB connection. And most turntables don't have one, but there are a few that do. Most notably, the Audio-Technica LP120X USB. It says it right there in the name, USB. So if you wanna do that, then this turntable would be a great choice for you. And you could use a free audio program like Audacity on your computer to record with. But if on the other hand, you just wanna play your records and you're not concerned with taking your records and putting them on your computer, then you don't need a turntable that has USB. So this is definitely something you should think about ahead of time. Now, the next thing you should think about is do you want the turntable to be belt drive or direct drive? So basically a belt drive means that the motor is off to one side and it spins the platter using a rubber belt. And a direct drive means that the motor is directly underneath the platter and it spins it directly. Now at first you might think, this seems kind of like a small detail. Who cares where the motor is as long as the thing works, right? Well, actually there are pros and cons to either one. So for example, a belt drive might have better sound because there's no motor rumble, but it could also fall out of sync with the music if its speeds aren't accurate. And a direct drive, on the other hand, is gonna have very accurate speeds, which won't fall out of sync with the music, but it could have some motor rumble 
leading to a drop in audio quality. Usually the higher priced turntables that sound great are belt drive and they just have very precise motors that keep the platter spinning at the perfect speed. But if it's a lower priced belt drive turntable, the speeds could slip a little bit and that wouldn't be good. Now I have the Fluence RT85 back here, which is a belt drive, and I really love this turntable. The speeds are right on the money. So in my opinion, if you're willing to spend $400 or $500 or even more, then belt drive is definitely the way to go. Now another thing to think about is, do you want a manual or an automatic turntable? A manual is by far the most common type where basically you raise and lower the stylus yourself. And on an automatic, it simply does that for you. So most turntables on the market right now are fully manual, but some like the Audio-Technica LP60X are automatic. So if you really want this feature, it's gonna be a little harder to find. Now, speaking of features, you should also consider if the turntable has auto stop. What's auto stop? Well, basically it means that once the needle reaches the end of the record, the platter will automatically stop spinning. So basically, if you enable this feature by flipping a little switch on the back of the turntable, then you won't need to worry about the platter spinning all night long and damaging your stylus just because you accidentally fell asleep and forgot to lift the needle. So I think this is a really cool feature that can definitely save the life of your stylus. And it's kind of nice to have this feature on a turntable. But just like the rest of these features, it's totally optional. So you have to decide for yourself if that's important to you or not. And finally, last of all, here are the record players that I would recommend to you. If you're looking for your first turntable and you want something affordable that also sounds good, I'd go with the Audio-Technica LP60X. It's a belt-driven turntable, it's got a built-in preamp, it's fully automatic, it has that auto-stop function, and it comes in five different colors. So basically, it's a great beginner's turntable. Now, if you're looking for something with better build quality and don't mind spending a little more, then I'd go with the Fluence RT81. This turntable is also belt driven, has a built-in preamp, has auto stop, but it also has a solid wood plinth or body that's much heavier, which is actually a good thing because it prevents vibrations and that in turn gives you a better sound. It also has a better cartridge has a counterweight at the end of the tone arm so the needle doesn't press down too hard on your record grooves, and it comes with a rubber slip mat as opposed to a felt slip mat. And that rubber slip mat further isolates the record from any vibrations, thereby achieving a slightly better sound. So overall, the Fluence RT81 is a quality turntable for a very good price. And last of all, if you're looking for the best turntable on the market right now, and don't mind spending a little more for something that's gonna last you a lifetime, then I would recommend both the Fluence RT85 and the Project Debut Carbon Evo. Both of these turntables are excellent in terms of build quality and sound quality. And in fact, in my last video, I compared them side by side and talked about the reasons why I think they're the best turntables that money can buy for under $600. So if you wanna check out that video, you can click this card right up here. Now, if you wanna know what other vinyl stuff I recommend, like my favorite accessories, speakers, and albums that I really like, I'll also drop that link down below so that you can check out all of that good stuff as well. Now before we go, today's song of the day is Back in Black by ACDC. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day as well, post in the comments down below and you might see it in a future video. All right, so that is everything that I can think of that you should look for when choosing a quality turntable. So do you agree with the points that I've mentioned or not? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you love collecting records and wanna learn even more about this great hobby, then feel free to subscribe and hit that little bell notification down there so you won't miss out on any of the new videos. And most importantly of all friends, have a fantastic day, stay safe out there, and keep spinning that vinyl.